Welcome back to the channel, Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and today we're going to be painting up Blackstone Fortress Warhammer Quest game. Uh, so Blackstone Fortress is a super cool game based in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. Uh, it is loaded up with unique models and honestly an awesome game to play. I highly recommend it. Uh, but rather than wait till the end and show you off the completed paint jobs, I uh, figured we would start at the beginning and show off the paint jobs. And if you do like them, you can stay tuned for the video, watch and paint along if you like. All the paints, everything used, including our basing techniques, will be either displayed in the video or listed down below. If you do have any questions, feel free to message me. I'll be glad to answer those as well. This is a really cool set. I definitely highly recommend it. The models are awesome. The gameplay is super fun. It's basically made for one to five players. It doesn't require someone to play as the bad guys. It has a built-in AI. Uh, very, very cool. But the truth is, if you're here now checking this out, you're probably already interested in the set and you're even more interested in painting it up. So we will start at the beginning. Uh, we're going to do custom bases. We're going to do our Zenithal highlights on all of the models. And then we're going to do our paint jobs as well. So here we have the beginning. So we're just going to start with all of our regular bases. All the bases in this set are push fit bases specifically for the miniatures and some have very delicate mounting points. So we don't want to alter those. So we're just going to basically go through and just kind of carve in with a razor blade, just some gentle grooves. Uh, be very careful, obviously cut away from yourself. The idea is just to match the floor tiles from the Blackstone set. So once we just go through and do all of them up, we want to make sure that we leave plenty of space for each of the model's feet, as well as all of the connection points and everything. So try to avoid putting any of like the gashes or any of the basing material too close to where the actual model will fit into the base. And this will avoid a bunch of problems later. Now, obviously, if it's going to be an issue, you can cut away some pieces. It's not the end of the world. Uh, in addition to our bases, we're also going to need some skulls. Uh, so we have a bunch of skulls from the Citadel basing set. And then of course we're going to need a little bit of cork rubble uh, if you don't have specific corks you could use any kind of cork material uh, and just kind of cut it up into little pieces bust it up uh, this is just my cork scratch and then of course we need a little bit of basing sand as well you can of course buy this i like the fine sand and the idea with the cork here is we're basically just going through looking for areas where we can just drop one or two of our little stones in here and then we're just going to keep building on each of our basic techniques so we started with the little gashes or cuts now we're doing little bits of cork as well and then we'll add in some skulls also uh, you don't have to put a skull or a piece of cork or sand on every single base. I like to just kind of mix it up and put a nice amount of each. Uh, but the goal is once you have some of our uh, little basing materials down there, the skulls and the rocks, you want to just go through and just add a little super glue and put some of that sand right around where it would naturally connect. And then, of course, we'll just go and put some random other little bits of sand to add a little extra texture to our bases as well. Nothing super complex here. Uh, keep it pretty simple overall. Uh, this is not some crazy basing technique. Uh, this is definitely a entry level technique, uh, but the results that you get obviously look very, very cool and definitely blend in perfectly with the Blackstone Fortress board. So, and you don't have to be super specific or anything like that. You want to just essentially add in little bits of sand anywhere where there appears to be too much negative space just to add a little texture. So, and here you can see we have them all completed. Uh, each of these bases has either a rock or a skull or a combination of the two, as well as a little bit of sand. I've done my best to avoid where the actual feet go and, of course, where the models slot into the bases themselves uh, to avoid any future headaches. And then we went ahead and gave all of the bases a black primer. And the next thing we're going to do is apply some Dark Reaper. And this is a Citadel layer. We're going to use a makeup brush for a dry brush. And essentially all we're going to do is just get a little on here. Uh, we'll take a minute to get the brush saturated appropriately. You want to get the majority of the paint off. But as you paint onto your surface, you want to just kind of leave behind a little of this. If you do it on something like a paper towel, like many people suggest, it will give a real ashy effect. If you do it on a piece of plastic or something else, uh, you'll have much more success. So I definitely recommend using a piece of plastic, putting a little paint on it, and then just gently kind of applying it to the brush and then applying from the brush onto your models. You'll see as the brush itself becomes saturated, uh, I will start to uh, shorten the process. The first couple, you'll have to go back and get some extra paint on the brush. Uh, but after we do a couple of them, uh, there's enough paint residual in the brush and we just add a little more on and the process becomes very, very seamless. So it's not super technical or anything like that. The idea is we want to just cover about 90% of the black primer with our dark reaper. 
And just a simple process. Uh, it is tedious with this set as we have like 50 miniatures in the box, uh, but uh, it pays off in the end as we'll have a real nice effect. So once we went through and did all of those, I will have something like this. And a matter of fact, if we didn't have them next to the all black primer, you probably couldn't even tell much of a difference, at least in the video. So next we want to go through and just do the same thing again. This time we're going to use a lighter gray. This is Celestra gray. And we're just going to go through and once again, we're just going to dry brush over everything. We want to have a little less paint on our brush this time. We want to be a little gentler. The idea is to pick out more of the edges and leave behind the majority of the Dark Reaper. So here we can see we're looking for about 25% coverage. So with the previous step, we wanted about 90% coverage. Now we want roughly 25% coverage. So it's leaving behind a lot of the Dark Reaper. And here we have all of the bases complete. The next thing we want to do is go through with some Corax white base. And all we're going to do with this Corax white is we're just going to go through and whiten all of our skulls. So we're just going to paint all of the skulls white for our next step. And this is super simple. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you miss a little bit near the base, just try not to get white on any of your surfaces. You don't want to have to clean up. If you do, you can go back through and tidy them up fairly easily. The goal is here to just get about 90% of the skull. If you get down in the cracks, if you get a little bit towards the edge, it's fine. Just make sure that you cover the skull up adequately. And then next we're gonna use our Xerxes Purple and Cantor Blue. So we're gonna use these on different bases. The idea being that half the bases will have a blue effect, the other half of the bases will have a purple effect, and it will kind of blend into the Blackstone Fortress floor tiles. So here, all we're doing is we're just taking our Xerxes purple and we're just putting some thick lines that cover up all of the gashes we carved in and we want it to overlap over the edges. So we want, essentially, we have a small gash. We want to have about four times the area of the gash itself uh, covered with paint. And then we're going to go through and do the exact same thing with Kantar blue on half of the bases as well. And again, the same thing. We want to make sure that this paint has nice flow to it. Uh, so that it leaves behind a nice covered area. Uh, we don't want it to miss any areas because of texture or anything like that. We want a full coverage. And now the next step is to just use a lighter version of the same color. So we're using Techless Blue for our blue. And then we're actually using an old Citadel paint that's no longer available. It's called Tentacle Pink. I'm not sure what they changed the name to. Uh, but uh, it has taken me about 30 years. I still haven't used up my pink yet. Uh, so we're still using the Tentacle Pink. Now the goal here when we do this is to not cover all of the purple that we put down. We want to cover about 50% of the purple with this pink here. So it leaves behind sort of like the darker purple on the outside. And then we have the lighter pink on the inside. And again, we're just making sure to uh, cover up and get down in those gashes. And then we'll just keep doing that for each of these. And again, the main goal is to just be very careful with this and make sure that we don't cover up all of the purple but we don't leave any areas we miss inside of the gash itself. And now we'll just do the same thing with the blue as well. Um, and again, we just want to make sure to leave behind some of that darker blue as sort of an outline for this blue. And if you make any mistakes, you can go back and add in a little bit of the darker. Uh, it's very, very forgiving, uh, but you just want to keep it nice and simple. Nothing too crazy here. And uh, just work through our 50 bases. And once again, just super careful, nice fluid paint and just make sure that we get nice coverage of everything as we go. And we'll see that it is very, very soothing effect right here. And we can already sort of see the darker outline and then the lighter blue starting to give us the idea that there's some sort of kind of glow coming from these cracks. And that is essentially what the Blackstone Fortress board looks like. And again, we want these to match the board. We want them to be colorful and cool and have some details if you pay attention to them, but we don't want them to be so bright that they take away from the actual models themselves. So here we have all of our bases, next step complete. So we have a dark blue and a dark purple, and then we have a light blue and a light pink respectively on each of the bases. So the next step now is to just go slightly lighter. So we're just gonna take a little bit of white and we're gonna blend that white in with the same color that we just used, about 50-50. Uh, you can use a little more white if it's not quite bright enough. But the goal here again is to just do a slightly smaller line inside. So we have a thick, dark blue line then we have a thinner light blue line and now we have a sort of blend between the white and the blue uh, that is super thin only down in the actual little bit that we kind of carved out now could you do this without making the cuts you could and just kind of wing it or have an idea or draw on it with a pencil or pen or something like that uh, but i find having the actual cuts not only gives a little three dimension to it 
but it makes this step much easier. So there we have our blue. We're just going to go through and do the same thing again. We want to just cover about 25% of our blue now. So the first step, we put the dark blue, then we covered about 50% of that with the light blue, and now we want to cover about 50% of that or less with this brighter white. And you can do as many steps of this as you want, just progressively getting lighter and lighter. I find that three steps is pretty much perfect uh, and achieves the effect without uh, any redundancy. And then here we're gonna do the same thing with our purple slash pink bases as well. Uh, so we just take that pink that we used in the last step and we're just gonna lighten it up with a little bit of white and then we're just gonna cover a little less than we did in the last step. And that's just gonna give us our progressive kind of blend of the light source coming from the cracks in the bases. And we'll just go through and do that for each of our purple bases as well. Being careful not to make any mistakes. And then here we have all the pink slash purple bases as well as the blue bases. And uh, we can see they're already coming along nicely, starting to really get that effect that we're looking for. And now the next step here, we're just gonna take some of our Skeleton Horde contrast paint, and we're just gonna go ahead and go over all of our skulls. Uh, so we just put a decent amount of this on our brush, make sure it is nice and loaded up. And then we're just gonna cover all the skulls. If you get a little bit on the base, it's no big deal, uh, but try to be tidy with this step as we are coming near completion of this step. So we'll just go through for each of those and do that for all the skulls. If you've never used this contrast paint before, uh, it basically just does multiple steps in a single coat and it gives a really nice effect for skulls. So there we have all the skulls done on all of our bases and obviously everything is looking very, very nice here. Coming along real nicely and uh, we have lots of different textures, little risen up areas, enough attention that the bases look cool if you take a closer look, but they're not gonna take away from our models. Now these bases aren't completed, but uh, we've done pretty much everything we can before attaching the actual models. Uh, so that is gonna wrap up the base portion of our Blackstone Fortress video. And on to the exciting stuff, as now we're gonna be making our models look super cool. So we will be using primarily contrast paints we're going to start with a zenithal highlight we're going to use lots of contrast paints metallics and then we're going to do some edge highlighting as well obviously you can use similar products do things differently if you like but the most important thing is that you achieve the effect you're looking for and in this case the effect we're looking for is essentially a zenithal prime that's going to give us dark shadows as well as the contrast paint which is going to give us a combination of a base a wash and then also some like layer edge highlighting and then of course we're going to go through and kind of clean it up with a little fine detail as well but if you do these steps correctly and in the proper order and you have some experience with this or even if you're new and you just practice by the end of the set you will be a master as this is a very very effective technique uh, so just kind of taking a look at some of our models here you can see i've done a zenithal highlight i started with a full-on black primer and then I went through and just did a Zenithal with a white ink. I use the Liquitex white ink. It works very, very well. If you do a couple coats of this, you can get essentially a black to white blend. You want to leave some of the grays. Uh, so first off, we're just going to get started with Gilliman Flesh once again. The key here is to just go through and do all the flesh on all the models. So we're just going to start with a couple of our uh, guys right here and just go through and essentially just look for any exposed flesh and we're just gonna go ahead and add a nice little coat of that Gulliman flesh. The key to this entire process is to be as clean as possible. We don't wanna make excess mistakes that are unnecessary. If we do, we can obviously go back through and tidy those up, but like anything, if you're redoing something, you're having to do it again, it means you're wasting time if you would've just done it right the first time. So the best thing to do is just take your time, be super clean. So we'll see there are all these kind of like fleshy sort of things going on with Obsidious Malix, the Chaos Lord here. I chose to paint those in a fleshy color. You could also do them as just like standard hoses or something like that. Uh, but this model is really dark, dark armor and everything. So I wanted like the fleshy tubes to kind of stand out. So here we've done his flesh on his face as well as all of these weird fleshy tubes so we're just going to go through for all the characters anybody that has flesh and we're just going to carefully cover up all that flesh with our guleman flesh and that will give us a nice base as well as highlights and you can see here before it dries already it's achieving a lot of that effect for us um and the best thing about the contrast paints combined with the zenithal highlight is essentially all the work that we put in preparing these models takes care of lots of the work later on. 
So you don't want to watch me do each and every one of these flush models by themselves. So we'll just speed through the process. Here you can see all the models have now had their flesh done. So here we can see all the models have Gulliman's flesh applied to them. And uh, that's it for this step. We're going to move on to our next color. And we're just going to repeat the process along the way, uh, essentially, till we're completed. So the next color we're going to use is Citadel Contrast Paint Black Legion. And rather than just show you this, we're just going to go through and do the exact same thing. I went ahead and sped up the process here. So you can see now we have our Gilliman's Flesh and our Black Legion. I've used this for all of the Chaos or like Bad Guy armor, as well as a couple other instances of Black uh, that needs to be taken care of as well but you can see now the models are already starting to come along again we're just being very careful to be tidy along these steps if you do make a mistake it's not hard to go back and fix it all right and then we're going to do apothecary white is next and this is just a contrast white paint uh gives sort of like a gray down in the shadows but adds a lot of detail so here we've done it on his hair uh you can see on his feet and then just coming from his uh face and he's got a little refrigerator on the back we've done that as well and then for the Eldar Ranger, we're going to do that for her armor also. So we're just going to go through and apply this down in there. Make sure that we cover up all of the armor. And uh, you can see here, actually, I do part of the boot as well. Uh, that should not have been done as it'll be repainted. But the beauty of the contrast paints is if you use a lighter color and then you come back through with a darker color afterwards, uh, no need to even correct anything as the darker color will just take over. And then here we're going to do on Taddeus's robes as well. A nice little coat of the apothecary white and this is an absolutely great contrast paint right here uh, if you have never used it i highly recommend it it turns white from a complete chalky chore into smooth creamy and perfect uh, and then again we're just going to do it on janice's hair here as well and a couple other little spots the goal is is just try to get everything uh, all at once while you have a single paint open and then go on to the next you're going to miss some things. You're going to change your mind. You're going to have some touch-ups. But if you can do the majority of things without opening and closing paints, you'd be better off. So here we have a custom paint right here. I'm not really sure exactly what you would call this. Some of the new Citadel stuff have this as well. Uh, it's like a homemade blend. So Citadel just put out a new range of contrast paints or like an expanded range. And there are some colors similar to this. I'm not sure exactly what it's the most similar to, but you can kind of see the color here. Uh, it's basically just a homemade mix I use for Space Wolves and various other things similar in color. We're just going to go through and paint up all of uh, the Urgul's as well as our little robots. And we're going to skip the Urgul's heads and their hands because we're going to use a different color on those. And then we're just going to blend it all together. And now here we have uh, UR25, the Imperial Robot. And again, we're going to go through and paint him up. We're going to skip his gun and his fist and a couple other little bits around there. We can see already, though, everything is coming together. So now here we've done so far our Gulliman Flesh, our Black Legion, and then, of course, our uh, Apothecary White, and then also our little custom blue blend. Uh, if you are curious exactly how I made this, I can give you the ratios of the various paints I used to create it. And then here we're just going to go through and do the same thing with Warp Lightning, Luxion Purple, Plague Bearer Flesh, and Flesh Terrors Red. And the goal here, essentially, same thing. We're just going to go through and pick out some specific details and really add some color to our models. So now here you can see we've added in a few of those details and the models are really coming along. We're just using the same steps that we've been using uh, for the cultists or any duplicate models. I'll reverse one color. So I might use brown on pants for one guy and green on pants for the other and then vice versa for the shirts. The main goal is to have the same colors used on the majority of the models to use not necessarily as few colors as possible, but not go ridiculous and use every color we own. Uh, so the next step here is we went through and we applied some Retributor Armor Gold. Uh, so we went through and essentially just added gold as well as Lead Belcher Silver uh, to all of the metallics. So now we have all contrast paints so far. We have our Zenithal Highlight and then we have some golds and some silvers as well and we can really see the set is starting to come along there's pretty much some paint on just about everything at this point in time and while the set doesn't quite look like it's coming together we can see we're making some serious progress on it and uh, obviously it's looking good so the next step we're going to use our nullin oil shade uh, so this is uh games workshops black shade and we're just going to go through oh actually we're not going to speed through on this one uh, i want to actually show you how we do this so we're going through on UR25, UR-025, and uh, we're just null and oiling over pretty much everything. 
And then again, on the Chaos models, we have a lot of silver. We just want to focus specifically on the Lead Belcher silver. We're just going to add a nice little bit of Null and Oil. If we get a little over the edges, that's fine. The goal of these washes is to essentially kind of clean up some of the mistakes, add a little bit of depth to our metallics, the same way that the contrast paints already have for our other colors. So it's a process. There's definitely a lot of metallics on these models, but we're just going to go back through and cover them all. And then next we're going to use Reichland Flesh Shade, and we're just going to do the same thing for our gold. So here we see now all the gold has been Reichland Flesh Shade, all the silver has been Null and Oiled, and then we also went through and uh, worked a little bit more on our Ur Ghouls, as well as our little robots. So everything is coming along real nicely at this step, and we can really, really see this set is coming along. So here we have our completed little robots. So all we did here to finish these guys up was just little put a little pink on their heads and on their feet and then we just dry brushed over it uh, with gray. So, And now we're just taking a look at some of the various hero, heroes. Uh, they're not completely finished at this point in time, uh, but they're very close. We've done the majority of the colors on the majority of these models. There's still a little some touch-ups that we'll have to make. We'll have to go back through and paint some of the details we haven't gotten through yet, but we can really see how much these models have come along. Uh, just by keeping them tidy and using this same technique over and over, we can see we have some really nice effects achieved here. So I'm a big proponent for contrast paints. They work phenomenally well. Uh, I absolutely love them. There are obviously plenty of alternatives out there also. I'm not putting any of them down, but uh, I am very, very happy with how the contrast paints work. And even after painting a massive commission like this, uh, over 50 model set, uh, most of these contrast paints have not even been dented yet. So pretty cool now. Uh, you could probably wrap it up on most of the models where we're at, uh, but a couple of them still have some cool details that we want to add in. We want to add in some OSL effects and possibly some edge highlights on certain areas. We want to look for specific things that jump out, areas that we need to clean up or anything like that as well. Uh, but you can see, obviously, the set has come along really nicely. We have really achieved a nice effect with all of these paints here. We have a very coherent group of miniatures. Uh, obviously belong together in the game and uh, we hope when we put the bases on here as well and just kind of do those finishing steps we're going to really have a nice set of models here so you can see a lot of the areas that have been left white still uh, we're going to do some glow effects or osl lighting effects in there as well um, if you have any areas like that that did get paint on them along the way now is the time you want to go back through and clean those up reapply that white coating um, before we get to the next step as anything we use these contrast paints on if there's something dark or a mistake underneath and we just paint over top of it it's going to show through all right so the next step here is we're going to go ahead and just put everybody on their bases um, so it's super simple we obviously have created all the bases we need for everybody in advance uh, we're just going to go through and just pop them in go ahead and glue them down to their bases and for the next step here we're just going to go ahead and use mordant earth to kind of blend in the bases we created with the actual little bits that are still attached to the models. So all we're going to do is basically use a gray Citadel texture paint or paste, and it has little bits of sand in it. I actually added a little bit of extra sand into it. And then we're just going to go through very, very carefully not to get any on our actual models, uh, but we're just going to kind of put it down in the little bits, fill in any little gaps we have or anything like that, and just kind of blend in our created bases with the actual models themselves for a seamless combination. And then after that, you just go through and use a bad and black on the base rims. We just want to black out all those base rims. It really cleans up your models, takes away any mistakes that you made along the way, and then gives them that strong contrast where the base starts uh, and the model starts compared to whatever board they're on. So um, as you can see, super cool effect right here. Uh, but uh, let's take a closer look at the completed set and uh, we can just kind of talk through anything. If you do have any questions or I missed anything along the way, if you're curious about how I do fire or OSL, anything like that, I have tons and tons of tutorial painting videos, modeling, conversions, magnetization, etc. And if there's something missing or something that you would like to see, uh, please let me know as I would be glad to create something in the future uh, if there is uh, something that we're missing or something that you need to learn. I'm obviously pretty good about getting back to people if they have questions or anything like that as well. So if you do have any questions, leave them in the comments and uh, I will definitely answer those ASAP. So here we'll take a look at uh, each of the models. So here is our Jonas Drake. Uh, very, very cool model right here. 
uh, came along real nicely. We can see how the base has been blended together uh, even after the push fit model has been set in here. Uh, and by planning out the bases in advance, you can see it looks like he's actually interacting with his environment. He's sort of like stepping. Uh, really, really cool model. Absolutely love this guy. And he's super cool in game terms. And I have to say that I'm very, very pleased with how this model came out. Uh, let me know what you think of these models down below. Who is your favorite character to play with? Which is your favorite miniature? And uh, next we have Tedius the Purifier. Uh, so once again, very, very cool. You can see all the effects and how they've come together. Basically looks like he is trudging through the Blackstone Fortress, trying to uh, share the word of the God Emperor uh, with the uh, Faithless and Fallen. Uh, super cool model right here as well. Uh, very nice looking priest. Definitely a fan of all the models in this set. They absolutely killed it. And they're all unique to this set, even though a couple of them are actually duplicated. And next we have Espern Locarno, the Imperial Navigator. Again, really, really nice looking model right here. Super cool, loaded with details. Uh, very happy with how this came out. Uh, super bright colors, uh, nice contrast, and uh, tons and tons of detail. And here we have Pius Vorn. Uh, so this one's super cool. Has this awesome giant chainsaw flamethrower deal going on uh very very cool one of my favorite models in the set and uh, obviously looks really cool all painted up each one of these models is loaded up with crisp detail and uh, one thing that's really nice about this set is the unique models that are available in it i use them in a lot of other things as well but they are really cool and then here we have the imperial robot er ur-025 uh, so this guy is really cool as well um, you can see essentially that we've gone through and how that little process that we did has really formed the depth and shades in the colors and everything. Uh, and then obviously our OSL effect and glow has really come off nicely also. A really, really cool model right here. And again, this guy's a beast in game terms. And then next we have Dayek Grek, the Krut Tracker. And this is one of probably my favorite models in the set. It's hard to say because there's so many cool ones. Uh, but this guy, again, is loaded with detail. And he is in many ways the inspiration for the new crew kill team that is available. Really, really nice. Loaded with details. And uh, honestly, the paint just makes this model. And here we have our Eldari Sniper. Uh, so again, a really, really nice looking model right here. Very cool. It's got the uh, big old Eldar Sniper Rifle as well as the cool little Power Sword. I really like the overall look of this model. Everything from the armor, the leather, the metallics, just really cool. Uh, definitely gives the effect of an elite operative. Probably, again, one of my favorites. And then who could play Blackstone Fortress without loving these little guys? This is Rain and Rouse. Uh, these guys are super cool. They have an awesome dynamic in the game. Rather than taking one hero, you get uh, two half-size heroes right here. Uh, and these guys are awesome. One has a grappling hook and a like auspex scanner device as well as a devastating mine. And the other one has a sniper rifle. And each activation you get to choose how you want to spend your points and what you want to do. Uh, and you can spend them split between these guys or just one guy can act and the other one can just stand there. Uh, they are really cool. It's a super cool dynamic and very, very fun. Uh, you're not going to want to leave home without these guys. And then here we have Obsidious Malix, the big bad from the set, armed with a thunder hammer and plasma pistol, as well as the powers of the Dark Gods. He is a more than formidable opponent. A very, very cool model. And you can see we've achieved some green OSL kind of effect on the plasma pistol, as well as some red on the hammer. And then we can see the combination of our contrast and metallic paints our washes and highlights have just really given this guy an overall cool and menacing look and uh, it just fits perfectly atop our little custom bases here and you really see how all of the bright colors come together but they're not just so much that it's just like color vomit all right and then of course he needs a couple of chaos marines as well to get his back and to put a smack down on in the Blackstone Fortress. Um, again, really cool models. These are actually the exact same model. And then they come with like a variance that you can swap out the head. So you can get a little different of a look to them. Uh, but they are actually the same model. And same thing here. So we have two of our little psychers. Um, obviously did some glow effects on one's hand and their eyes. As well as the other one's forehead. Uh, to just kind of show that they are summoning some kind of 
dark powers here. Uh, these guys are super cool. They're like chained down with weights and uh, they've got their little uh, evil staffs and their magic powers. Really cool. And then here we have a couple of the beastmen in the set. There's actually four in the set here. And uh, the way you can kind of build them, they have options as well. You can make it so none of the four looks exactly the same. You see here, these two have the same kind of weapons, uh, but they don't have the same heads or bodies. And then you can swap out and do the other ones so that they will have a chain sword uh, and again, different heads and bodies. So really cool how they've done it, uh, essentially allowing you to have a push fit kit with options. So now here's our Urghuls. These guys are absolutely awesome. You can see how well that blue went. And just by adding a little bit of our pink on the hands, the head and the feet, and then just doing a gentle dry brush has really, really given us a nice effect. And by not using a paper towel to soak up the paint and using plastic instead, it doesn't actually soak out the water there. So we don't get that chalky effect that you often see with less experienced dry brushers. And then here we have our little robots as well. So we did sort of like a brighter look, a little OSL around the face, but essentially the same thing has been done here as with the Urghuls. May want to do a little bit of a targeted washing in certain areas, kind of darken it up or touch it up before or after the dry brush. Uh, but when it's all said and done, um, the models just look absolutely amazing, come together really, really nicely and uh, stand out from a distance. So, you know, you can kind of see in the background, we can see all the stuff going on. We can see different like bright areas and stuff, but at the same time, it's still kind of dark and coherent. So really, really cool look here. Uh, these guys are the Negavolt cultists are next. And again, we just went through, there's two and two of these, two of each, two males, two females. And uh, we just mixed it up a little bit with the kind of glow. So we made sure that one of each has each of the colors of glow again these models are super cool they are devastating in gameplay and they're an absolute pleasure to paint as well so and we are getting towards the end here we've got a bunch of our trader guard left to take a look at there's actually 14 of these guys in the set it's seven and seven they're male they're female they're armed with various close combat or shooting weapons uh, there is a sergeant for each seven you will want to have some kind of distinguishing marks for each seven. Uh, so I painted seven of them to match and then the other seven to match as well. That way in game terms, it's easier to sort them out. Another thing you can do is just make sure that seven of them are on the pink bases and seven of them are on the blue bases because in the game, you're going to have to activate them. There's going to be times when you have all 14 on the board at once and it's going to be too hard to keep track on your own. So just make sure when you're doing the paint job that you do something to distinguish them from each other so that you have the two groups separate. Uh, but here you can see some of the different weapons configurations. Some of them are big. Some of them are small. There's males. There's females. Uh, really nice set here. A uh, really nice variance between them. There's even stuff like a special weapon flamethrower or a grenade. And uh, also these models were the inspiration for the blooded kill team as well. The Trader Guard uh, set that recently came out. And to tell you the truth, those blooded are really cool. But some of these models are actually uh, even better. I'm a big fan of this guy. He's loaded up with grenades, dynamite, all kinds of stuff. There's tons of detail on these models. They are an absolute pleasure to paint. I definitely recommend that you do so yourself. So, so that's it. We have a completed set of Blackstone Fortress, uh, 50 models here, all painted up, uh, based and ready to go, ready for just hundreds of hours of gameplay in probably one of my favorite Games Workshop games, Definitely my favorite standalone game. If you have never played any of the Warhammer Quest games, they are absolutely amazing. There are ones in the fantasy setting like Cursed City, as well as this one that takes place in the future or 40K world. Um, and this is obviously the Blackstone Fortress boxed game set. And uh, very happy with how this came out. Uh, definitely a pleasure to paint. Um, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to like and subscribe, share it with your friends, do all kinds of reactions, reviews, and news, painting, modeling, conversion tutorials for Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team, Necromunda, Age of Sigmar, Warcry, Horus Heresy, pretty much any of the Games Workshop games. Um, if there was something in this video that you had a question about or you felt like was left out, if there was some different footage that you wish would have made it into the cut, I'd be glad to make sure that future videos contain that or I can do specific shorter videos showing exactly how I do flames or OSL or anything like that as well. So it uh, really does help out the channel if you like and subscribe though. Appreciate you checking out the video today. If you did enjoy it, make sure that you uh, leave a comment down below. really helps out with the algorithm. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out some of the other videos as well. There's 
There's tons of magnetization, painting, conversion, tutorials uh, for all the different games. Just go ahead and check out the playlist. And again, if you have any questions about what paints were used or anything like that, you can always find it down below in the description. And if something's missing, just make sure to ask and I'll be glad to answer that question as well. So that's it for today. This is our Blackstone Fortress uh, completed game set. Uh, let me know how you think it came out, if you enjoyed it, if you enjoyed this type of video. Would you like to see a shorter version of this video that demonstrates the paint jobs? Or uh, would you rather see a longer version that just shows everything? Uh, let me know, and that way I can make sure to give you guys the content that you want. But that's it for today, Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and if you enjoyed the Blackstone Fortress painted set, make sure to like and subscribe. But in the meantime, I'm out of here.